Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are back working on the Sweetheart Roadster. I know everybody's been giving me crap in the comments, and yes, we are still going to work on the car this year. <laughs> so, um, in the last couple of videos, I got all the major rust repair done on the table. We pulled it off the table, got it on the ground, and it's been really cool to just stare at the car now with like the doors done and all, all of that uh, major ugliness of the car is kind of taken care of. So, I am done for a little while doing major rust repair on this car and I wanted to do something a little fun. So I decided I'd pull one of the cool parts that I have sitting for this car out of the stash and we'd work on that in today's video. So uh, about a year ago or so we uh, went and did a big buyout at an estate that was an early Ford collector but he specifically collected 3536 stuff and in that uh, our buddy Georgia was helping us found the biggest treasure. One of the biggest treasures we found was a very, very nice reproduction uh, Duval windshield that was made for a 3536 Ford. And uh, we drug that home, I've had it stashed away. And the reason I wanted that windshield frame is because they were kind of made to sit forward on the cow. Uh, on most of these cars and when you get one for a Model A or even a 32 uh, when you try and slide it back on the cow where I really wanted to put it it was a problem because they end up being too narrow so 3536 is a little wider so when we slid it back and did a test fit it looks like it should work so what I'm gonna work on in this video is a getting it mounted to the car so just getting um, some studs put into the bottom of it, get holes drilled in the cow, which is a little nerve-wracking, and then I'm going to do some modifications to the corners to get everything to flow together and look like it is meant to be on the car. I'm dying to do this, so let's get started. coffee next to the fire and look at how cool it looks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing's going to be so bitching with that. Oh, it is such a cool rig. Yeah, it's got just, yeah, it's, it's totally that is such a cool rig. The 
hit the straps in a bad spot. Yeah, <laughs> That's a little better. You gotta take that little shelf out. Yeah. Probably could go low. I think if I... I think it needs to go even lower. It looks yeah. like you're like right at that. Yeah, and if I take the shelf out, I could lean back a little more. Time. Yeah. But it's going to be another one with a freaking two-inch thick foam seat. Mm-hmm. I can't have anything comfortable. Comfortable. <laughs> now the Berker. What do you ever said being cool is going to be easy? I know. There we go. Right? I got, I got to be comfortable. And that's what matters. There we go. There it is. Yep. Now you're down under the windshield. All right, so kind of did this side without filming a ton because I was just trying to figure out what the hell I was doing. And uh, I, got, I got this side pretty good. We're gonna show you on the other side a little more what I did, but I ended up, um, I got this side roughed in. The hard part is, is there's not a lot of access, so this is a, definitely a little more uh, rougher on the edges than I prefer. Um, but I have kind of decided, I think I'm gonna do some lead work on this car, so this would be a good area for that. So what I ended up doing is, I made this piece with the bead roller that we put we restyled here and I split the center of the bead right here to weld it in so it kind of just blends into the factory bead and goes into my new stuff and goes up and we weld it across here and we have that piece that we added that matches the door and then I added another piece that went up into here. This is just because of my skill level, I'm not able to make all of that madness out of one piece. Um, so that, this was the best way I was able to do it. Then we had a little shelf underneath and if you've ever looked at all, a lot of these cars to have Duval windshields from back in the day. There was, there was a awkward looking area right here because the windshield sticks up on the ends quite high. So you can see on this side, I haven't started yet. I'm like stick my hand almost in there. So there's a lot of cars like the Doc Wenzel car is a, one of my favorite old roadsters. It's a 
one of my big influences for this car and they kind of built like a square looking shelf up and I think they raised the whole windshield up pretty high up off the cow and it's all leaded in. It was done by Valley Custom back in the day. So the work is very, very good, but I always thought right in this corner it was a little awkward. So by restyling, you know, that, that swoop right there in the body line, it kind of looks natural. And I put this little shelf here to take up the gap and that kind of matches up with that body line there. So I think it looks pretty good. It's a good um, compromise to try and fit this in the corner. You can see this side, I pretty much got it fitting pretty good. There's a little tiny gap right there, but that's that's very minimal. That's something, that, again, if we're doing lead work, we can just fill that a little bit. Or I don't haven't put the bolt down right here on this corner. I have all the bolts on this side in and it's pulled down tight to about here. So if I pull this one down, it might fill that gap a little bit, but. You can see it's fitting pretty darn good against the cow there other than that one little spot. So it's very, very good. And then that corner over there we got to do. So I'm going to start making the other side and I'll kind of show you guys a little bit more step by step what we're doing. I am going to fill, probably weld this, this edge up here and blend it in so it's like this and it doesn't look like two pieces anymore. Um, so I'll do that kind of either off camera or you know at the very end here. but. I am very psyched on how this is looking. It looks so, so, so cool. Makes the car look way more elegant and way faster. So I got a lot of work to do on the other side. I probably got two days work in the, that little corner there, just figuring it out. I'm hoping this side we can go a little bit quicker because I know what I'm doing, quote unquote. So I got this uh, bead rolled you saw in the last shot and I was kind of just rough cutting this into shape. So we got this radius that matches the other side. I left it, I actually extended the radius and made it a little long so we can kind of move it around and make everything flow. I know that our patch starts right here. I measured off the other side and then I know that there's a little area where it kind of uh, goes up across here. So by knowing that we can kind of hook it in right in the front there somewhere and then we can lay this back till it lines up with the windshield roughly. So you can see that right here I made the bead just kind of extend. So we, we can just lay it down so that it lines up with the point of the windshield lines up with right where that valley of the bead is. And that kind of gets us going in the right direction. So what we need to do now is this section here needs to roll over. And also this bottom needs to have some shape to it because it, it it's going to be the second half of the bead there. So we need to kind of start giving this a little shape so it's not too flat in the center here. So the way we're gonna do this is just by stretching the metal, um, by just hammering on an anvil, we can actually, on, which is the same as like on dolly, we're gonna be stretching the metal. So that will give this some shape so when it rolls over, it will actually have um, compound curve to it like the uh, gas tank already has. And then the same thing in here, we could put a little bit of shape in this area so that it's out. So when we weld across the center here, it. Uh, kind of matches in shape. And uh, we just gotta do a little bit of manhandling to get everything to do what we want. So I'm gonna start by putting this part right here probably on the uh, pipe anvil just to start this roll. And then we'll see what it does. And like I said, we may tap around in there to give it 
um, some, some shape, but definitely in here when I roll this over, it's gonna need that stretch to allow it to uh, fold over um, and not only have you know some, some shape to it. So got a bunch of back and forth on the anvil and uh, with hammer and dolly to, uh, to get it to even start to fit. So I got this all hammered out on the, uh, on the anvil and you can see just by stretching the metal it naturally starts curving and around so it does what we want. But have this come around here and also this to go down as a reminder I have a line cut there we're going to be cutting off a lot of this but you got to kind of shape all the metal that's around that area just so it all naturally doesn't have like a hard line when you stop hammering. So I did some hammering in here it needs a little bit more around this edge to tune it up but um, you can see it's given us what we want. Went from a flat piece of metal with a bead in it to something that's got some shape. So we can just straighten it out a little bit using some of our leg, knee, whatever. And that bottom metal will become a problem pretty quickly. Try to cut that off. So. Yeah, like down here is hitting, so it's hard for me to see what's going on. But you can see, and kind of get this to line. Like I said, that line, we want to line up right with the point to match the other side. A little overlap behind is not a problem. So that's coming in to exactly what we want. I think I can actually cut off right at our line here, and we should be good to start fitting it a little better. Before we cut any metal on the actual car, we want to get this patch fitting half decent, but this is starting to roll over. I'm going to make this patch out of multiple pieces so I know it doesn't fit in here. Again, I don't fully have the talent or ability. It's easier for me to tackle if I make it in a couple pieces. So this part's probably the most difficult. So we're gonna make that first, get it kind of tacked in and then we'll kind of fill in around it. So um, that's working pretty good. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit and uh, get it sitting in there. And then we'll probably start cutting pieces out and then we'll make our piece up here and also for there. Next.
right, so that side went a lot smoother. I ended up making uh, a bunch of the pieces off the car because I knew what I was kind of doing this time. And um, I was able to weld it and uh, kind of finish out a lot of the parts off the car. So I was just doing basically one big weld. So we did a weld right along here and then it kind of cuts over to there and comes along. So this one's a lot nicer. It's going to need a lot less work to get it smoothed out and acceptable for uh, filler or lead or whatever I decided to do. So the biggest problem then is on the side here. You can see we have a gap here. I can almost, you know, I can fit a finger underneath. And uh, and then in the front, it kind of reduces just right in here. So I have the last, I have the second to last stud uh, in. So I put the stud in here and when you tighten it down, it, it pulls it down to the sheet metal real nice because uh, there's a tiny bit of a gap there if you don't have that stud in. There's one stud on the corner, but I don't want to be pulling really hard on those corners because it could break the windshield when it's all uh, set and done. So uh, I'm going to leave those studs till basically everything's together and fitting. So what I ended up doing on this side is you can see I have a little like ridge that I made here and kind of sculpted it in. So what I ended up using was just round bar stock. This is kind of like a old customizer trick. I mean, that's super common. They would use round bar for everything. So uh, I usually reach for that when I got to sculpt or do different things. So what I do is take this round bar and basically keep sanding it down until it fits under that gap. I just have to make it from you know thin to thicker there. And uh, once that fits in there, I also have a little bit of a bend on it um, so that it kind of wraps around the corner naturally, even though most of it will get sanded off. So once I get that sanded and fitting in there, um, I can tack it in place and then I'll do the same with some smaller rod like I think this is an eighth inch, eighth inch rod here, and I'll get that underneath, and same thing, sand it down until it's basically nothing back in here. Weld that in, and then you could sculpt it all in and blend it and make it look like the other side is, and then once that's all fitting and looking nice with the windshield on, then we could take it off and we could finally do this strip that's in the back there um, that kind of connects this bar, this dash rail, to the top of the gas tank sheet metal and all the modifications we've done. So I'm gonna get the sand in some of this bar stock, get it all fitted and welded in, and hopefully I'll have this thing looking pretty good from you know the sides and the front really soon. All right, so when I'm welding this uh, round bar stock or square bar stock and you're doing kind of this sculpting type thing uh, and you want to kind of bring the edges or uh, create a valley that looks natural like a body line. Um, what I usually do is I crank the welder up much higher than I want to weld normal sheet metal with. Um, so like this stuff I was welding up in here at like 35 amps roughly. Um, down here I have it turned up to 72 amps. That's because I'm using 330 second rod because I want to really shove that rod in there and get it into this valley down here. And we want to build up some metal, so I want to use larger filler rod. And also, this bar stock is, you know, quite thick. This is like, I don't know, quarter inch rod or something like that. So we want to, we need a lot of heat to melt that in. So I use the thicker rod and uh, higher amps. And then what I do is kind of favor the the rod section, square stock, round stock, whatever. Um, and then I and I shove some of the filler rod in and kind of blend it down, and that gets it right into that valley, so we can start creating a foundation to uh, weld it in. So it's a little bit of a, kind of put some filler rod in, blend it down. As soon as it touches, basically as soon as that rod melts and touches the sheet metal, I let off because it's really, really easy to burn a giant hole in the sheet metal at 75 amps. So you have to be kind of careful here. So I don't usually do the, sometimes I'll do like, you know, dab and weld or I'll, I'll kind of do a weave type deal like this. I'm doing now, um, kind of fill the rod in, but sometimes you just have to do step by step. You have to just put a little rod in, fill. And once we get this kind of this valley down here filled in, um, then we can kind of build off of that. I have the rod sticking out, just the, or the round bar stock sticking out a little proud from the edge of the windshield frame because I want to have some material to grind down and make it nice and flush. So. Um, that way you don't have to build up on the face of it using your filler rod. It's, you're, you're kind of just sanding it down. Back in here, it's a little bit more, as it kind of comes up and around, we have a little bit more to fill. So we're gonna have to do some larger, you know, a couple passes here. But we're trying to get it into the valley as much as I can. 
So again, we have a good weld. We have something that's not going to break or crack over time. So it's actually welded and not raised or leaded. And uh, you just got to work with it. It starts to get kind of high. You got to lay off a little bit, let it cool down. Especially because I got my windshield frame here underneath of it. So I got to kind of be a little careful. But I'm going to try and work my way around. Like I said, we might have to make a couple passes in this back corner here. Just to uh, I'm trying as much as I can to like shove rod in there and then work it down. This is where having extra your round or square stock sticking out a little bit really helps you because then you can you can kind of wick it down onto it and you're using this extra material almost like filler rod. So I can do that too on my next pass. I can start working some of this extra material on the outside here, heating it, and by melting it I can kind of wick it right into itself and you, you don't have to you're using material there instead of having to grind it off and add filler rod, you're just using that material and blending it into itself. So it works out pretty nice like that. So I got most of that welded around the side there and up into this corner. I'm going to leave it alone for a few minutes so it cools down and we don't overheat this windshield frame in that area. Um, I just have one little spot back here. Then I'm going to go back, do a second pass to get it uh, blended in a little bit from up here like we were talking about. And then we'll start making our smaller piece in here, which we're going to use eighth inch bar, I believe. It's what I used on the other side. And blend this little section in. We'll do the same thing. We'll weld up along this front edge here. Then we can take the windshield frame off and mark where we want to sand everything, sand it all, weld any of the back areas that we can't get to right now. And then I uh, should be able to blend it all in and it'll be pretty much roughed in for now. All right, so after a bunch of sanding and sculpting, we got the corner all in place, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Uh, I decided to leave this top strip here with the gas tank and the dash meet. 
uh, just to kind of stare at it for a little while before I decide what I'm doing. I have to do a ton of work just to, again, sculpt the doors into the dash. So that's gonna take some staring and figuring out. So I figured I'd leave it alone for now. Pretty happy with how it looks. I mentioned it earlier in the video, I'm planning on doing a little bit of lead work on this car and on these corners is probably where I'll do that because it will hold up the best, better than trying to use body filler, which might crack over time. But either way, it looks really cool. It looks fast, it's just sitting still, which was the idea. And uh, I pretty much had this vision for this windshield since the day I got this car and finally like, five, six years later, uh, I have it on and it's starting to look uh, kind of like I envisioned in my head. So a uh, huge step on the Sweetheart Roadster. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Catch you later.